Welcome to Sauna Nerds Pecha Kucha series. This Pecha Kucha will spend the next 20 slides for 20 seconds each explaining the importance of obtaining a good patient history through research and conversation when preparing for an abdominal ultrasound. After the presentation stick around for a 10 question quiz to see if you're ready to talk the talk and walk the walk with your patient. Every day, sonographers are asked to use their skills and knowledge to take a set protocol of images related to an ultrasound order. But before this can happen, a great sonographer will research the patient's symptoms, lab values and interview the patient to create a list of differentials before the gel even hits the skin. Let's take a closer look at what a sonographer might encounter when a provider orders an abdominal ultrasound. When scanning the abdomen, the sonographer will take images of the liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidneys, spleen, and the great vessels. By using clues from the patient history, the sonographer will have a better idea which organs will need extra close attention. When considering differentials, the best place to start is looking at the order. When a provider orders an ultrasound, they should include what type of ultrasound and the reason why. Abdominal ultrasounds include a liver gallbladder protocol, a right upper quadrant or an abdomen complete. If the reason why is unclear you can call the provider, ask the patient or research in the EMR. If you have access to the patient's electronic medical record or EMR, this is an excellent place to start looking for information. Some items you will want to be sure to review are notes from the doctor appointment that the order originated from, previous imaging the patient had, current lab values and surgical notes if applicable. An important part of the provider notes will be why the patient sought out an appointment. This is called patient complaints and will be in the patient's own words. This section will be a good place to look for patient symptoms to determine differentials. Patient symptoms that you will commonly see with abdominal ultrasound orders are pain, bloating, heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Another area to review in the notes is the provider summary. This section includes provider observations made during the appointment and course of action. The summary will confirm or question patient symptoms, add new information, and describe the thought process of imaging and laboratory orders. For example, the notes might say we will get an abdominal ultrasound to evaluate for gallstones. The EMR will also have a history of the patient's previous imaging. In this area, you can review images and radiologist reports. This step is extremely important. If previous pathology has been seen, we need to know where it was located, what it used to look like, and the size. Be sure to review previous abdominal ultrasounds, abdomen CT, and MRIs. Next, you will want to look under the laboratory tab in the EMR. This will have the patient's history of blood, urine, and pathology tests. When an abdominal ultrasound is ordered, important labs to look for are a hepatic panel, metabolic panel, and complete blood count, or CBC. Look for abnormal results, usually indicated by an arrow or exclamation point. If you are new to evaluating labs, you can use the internet or a cheat sheet to help you remember what pathologies are related to abnormal lab values. Abdominal ultrasounds are commonly ordered when liver function tests come back elevated. Increased LFT can indicate fatty liver to gallstones to cancers. Lastly, review the patient notes for any surgeries or other information that might be helpful while scanning the patient. Include notes of your research onto the ultrasound technologist worksheet to document your findings for the radiologist or reading provider. You should now have a good idea of what pathologies to be on the lookout for. But remember to fully evaluate each organ and not get stuck on one diagnosis. At the time of the appointment, you should be ready with questions to ask. Obtaining an accurate history will include reviewing what you read in the EMR and listening to the patient to be able to clarify any confusing information. You need to learn how to do this in a caring and supportive manner so the patient feels heard. Speak slow, loud, and avoid medical jargon. Interview the patient when you are in a private room, like the ultrasound suite. Ask them to have a seat on the bed or the chair. Confirm their identity with two patient identifiers like their full name and date of birth. Also confirm what test you are doing and the doctor that will get the results, who is usually the ordering provider. Take a seat near them to have your conversation, avoid multitasking. While you are talking to the patient you can assess the patient for visual symptoms. What color is their skin? Jaundice patients will have liver or biliary pathologies. Are they grimacing? This can be an indication of pain. Where are their hands? Patients often touch the area that is painful or symptomatic. Does their abdomen look distended? This could indicate ease. 
Begin asking the patient their symptoms. Pain in the right upper quadrant usually indicates liver or biliary pathology, while lower abdomen pain might be bowel or ovary-related. Flank pain is more likely renal-related and epigastric pain typically corresponds with the pancreas. Ask how long their symptoms have been present, and if anything helps to ease symptoms. You won't always have access to the EMR. Ask questions about any previous lab results, imaging or surgeries. Look at the patient's abdomen for any obvious scars. Cole e cystectomies are common with about 300,000 happening each year. Not visualizing the gallbladder due to removal is very different than due to hepatization or perforation of the gallbladder. You also want to verify that the patient has followed the protocol preparation. For abdominal ultrasound, most patients are asked to not eat or drink anything for 8 hours. By not eating or remaining NPO, the patient's gallbladder will be filled to allow for easier evaluation and air in the gastrointestinal tract will be reduced, allowing for better visualization of the abdominal organs. Once you have all the information that you need, you should take the time to explain the exam to your patient, including the images you will take, any positioning or breathing they will need, how long the exam will take, and how they will get the results. Always ask your patient what questions they have and if there is anything else you need to know. They will appreciate being part of the process and feel like you are interested in their care and safety. All you have left to do is scan. Remember to keep your differentials in mind, but don't forget that pathology can surprise you. Make sure to sweep through all the organs looking for structural abnormalities. Any pathology you find should be imaged in two planes, with color and measured. Thank your patient when you are done and recap any important information they need before they leave. Sonographers can serve the patient and healthcare team more efficiently by obtaining a detailed patient history. Knowing how to research and how to ask the right questions can expedite the process. Combined with strong knowledge of pathophysiology, the sonographer plays a key role in providing an accurate diagnosis for every patient we scan. Let's check what you learned. See if you can answer these 10 questions about obtaining a patient history. After the question is presented you will have 3 seconds before the correct answer appears. Where is the best place to start when researching a patient's ultrasound order? How long should a patient be NPO for prior to an abdominal ultrasound? If a patient can't remember their surgical history, what can you do? Think pain is commonly associated with What does EMR stand for? What labs become elevated in general with liver pathology? Where would you look to read the patient's description of their problem? What should be included on an ultrasound order? How will you know if the patient has questions? Do you need to know specific values for lab tests? Thank you for watching this Pecha Kucha on abdominal ultrasound, getting the patient history. Come back for more quick videos and educational content.